let's say we're considering a, a spring. Uh, of course, a spring is something that um, you can either compress or stretch. Um, but of course, um, uh, the spring is going to try to resist that. So um, if you are um, stretching the spring, it's going to exert a force to try to pull it back, pull itself back to its natural length. Or if you're compressing a spring, it's going to exert a force to again try to push itself back, expand itself back to its natural length. So let's say a certain spring has a spring constant of three newtons per meter. I just made this up. Uh, now, of course, different springs have different spring constants. Uh, so this spring has a spring constant of three newtons per meter. Recall that newtons is a measure of force. And of course, meters are a measure of distance. Well, now, try to interpret what does this spring constant tell us about this spring? Well, suppose you take the spring and you start at its natural length and you compress it by one meter. Now, if you compress the spring by one meter, you're going to feel the spring pushing back against you. The spring is going to try to expand itself back to its natural length. Um, but how hard is it going to be pushing? Well, if you compress the spring by one meter, this spring will push back at you with a force of three newtons. That's what the spring constant means. If you compress it by one meter, it pushes back against you with a force of three newtons. Also, if you stretch the spring by one meter from its natural length, if you stretch the spring from one meter, the spring is going to try to pull against you, to pull back to its natural length. And if we stretch this spring by one meter, it's going to pull against you with three newtons of force. That's the meaning of the spring constant. Let's think about a second spring. This second spring has a spring constant of 8 newtons per meter. Try to interpret what that means. Well, if we compress this spring by 1 meter, it's going to push back against us with 8 newtons of force. Or if we stretch the spring by one meter, it's going to pull against us with eight newtons of force. So clearly different springs can have different spring constants. Which of these two springs is stiffer? Which of these is a stiffer spring? Give that some thought. Well, if we compress both of them by one meter, this spring only pushes against you with 3 newtons of force, but this spring would push against you with 8 newtons of force. So this one pushes back harder if you compress it an equal distance. So the second spring is the stiffer spring. It's the spring that's harder to stretch or compress. Compressing this spring, um, uh, to, keep it at one, uh, to keep it compressed by 1 meter, we have to exert a force of 8 newtons. But to keep this first spring compressed by 1 meter, we only have to exert a force of 3 newtons. So the second spring is the stiffer. Um, spring. The spring constant is a concept um, that students usually encounter uh, quite early in their physics course. Um, but I think many people can go through that whole first semester of physics when they're studying springs um, and when they're using spring constants and they never really understand what the spring constant is. They just kind of treat it like a constant that they just plug into formulas. Uh, well, now when we see that the spring constant has a unit which is a ratio unit, now we've automatically got more insight to what the spring constant uh, means. It tells us how much force the spring is pushing back with when we compress it by one meter. Um, and now that we have that extra insight, we can start to um, do more interesting problems, for example, comparing different springs. We can say if the springs have different spring constants, now we can interpret what that means. This must be the stiffer spring because if you compress it by one meter, it pushes back with a greater force than this one. Obviously, um, the only way to compare which of the two springs is stiffer is to, both, is to compress them both by the same amount, right? Um, just be, um, uh, if we were compressing these by different amounts, we, uh, we couldn't tell which one was stiffer just by looking at the forces that were being um, exerted. So this shows you the usefulness of using a ratio unit where everything is in terms of one meter on the bottom.
right? Well, now we've surveyed a lot of the concepts in physics and chemistry that have ratio units. Uh, we probably haven't been exhaustive. There's probably a bunch of other units that I haven't thought of in physics and chemistry that have ratio units. Um, and again, what I've tried to be pointing out here is when you look for ratio units and understand how to interpret them, they give you much more insight into the meaning of concepts. Concepts that could otherwise be mysterious, like the electric field or the electric potential or the density uh, or the spring constant, uh, become much more commonsensical um, if you interpret them in terms of their ratio units. Um, so again, some of the people that are watching these videos might be people that have already encountered most of these concepts. Uh, but it could be that you never um, really had a very firm common sense understanding of the concepts. I hope that now you feel that you have a better grip on a lot of these concepts now that you think of them in terms of ratio units. On the other hand, um, maybe some of the people watching this video are just at the beginning of their courses and maybe most of the concepts that I was talking about here are concepts that you haven't seen yet. Uh, well, what I want to point out to you is um, then even if you've never heard before about a lot of the concepts I put in here, even if this is the first time that you saw the concepts, once I gave you the units, and once I pointed out that they were ratio units, notice that you were able to figure out what the concept meant, even if you'd never heard of it before. That really shows you the power of focusing on the units and focusing on the ratio units. Um, so again, the point is, once you see that a concept um, is measured in ratio units, you can figure out what the concept means even if you've never heard of that concept before. You don't have to look the concept in a, up in a textbook necessarily to figure out what it means. You can just look at the ratio units. Um, so for example, again, there might be some of you there who have never heard of a spring constant before. Um, but you should still be able to figure out what it means once you know that it's measured in newtons per meter, as long as you know that newtons is a measure of force. Uh, I want to point out something that's been very helpful to us in considering ratio units. Remember how useful it's been whenever we're considering a ratio unit to put the number one on the bottom of the ratio. And again, as we've discussed, mathematically speaking, it's not really necessary to put this number one here because multiplying something by one doesn't change it. Uh, but putting the number one has made it much easier for us to interpret these ratios. So please remember that if you're having any trouble interpreting a ratio unit, one thing that really helps is placing this number one on the bottom of the ratio. That's something that should help you uh, in interpreting any of the ratio units we've seen. And if you happen to come across a new ratio unit that we haven't talked about in this video, now you should have the skills to figure out what that ratio unit means. And if you're having any trouble, make sure that you've remembered to put a number not just on the top of the ratio, but also to put the number one on the bottom of the ratio.